Magandang umaga sa ating mga kapatid at kaibigan sa Denmark at Spain. Magandang uh, tanghali sa ating mga friends at mga kapatid sa Pilipinas. Magandang hapon sa Australia. Magandang gabi sa ating mga kapatiran sa Canada, Northern and Southern California. Sa nagdaang taon, napakaraming pagsubok ang ating dinanas at tinarap. You are emotionally shocked, exhausted with a COVID pandemic, the lockdowns, the vaccines, bailout, the crimes against property, crimes against person, devastation of properties, natural disasters, bagyo sa Pilipinas, eruption ng Tal Volcano, yung fire dito sa Southern and uh, Southern uh, California and Northern California and yung sa Australia. Racial trauma here in America. The weekend peaceful rally at the Capitol Hill which was disrupted by these thugs. What can we, Christ-believing people, say about this? Sabi ni Bill Graham, Life at its best is a life in the will of God. Totoo po yun. Because we cannot change the past. We can change our perspective. We can change our lifestyle. In fact, the enemy is working so hard to change our beliefs. The wheel of life continuously turning. These things are just to confirm that change is constant in our lives. But God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Ito po ang ating uh, pagbubulay-bulayan ngayong araw na ito. Invite po natin ang uh, panal na Espiritu na siya ang manguna sa ating pag-aaral at siya ang magturo sa atin at siya ay pumagitna sa ating uh, pag-aaral na ito. Let's uh, close our eyes and pray. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Thank you for the great group, for this great group, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity to address them from your word. We need you, Lord. Thank you for all my friends, relatives, classmates, acquaintances, my brothers and sisters in Christ that have chosen to worship fellowship and pray with us today. Lord Jesus, enjoy this day with us on this marvelous weekday. We pray that you will be pleased what we do here on earth. And we pray that you will touch lives, alter destiny, and even change eternity. That's a big prayer because you're a big God. We thank you for your love your peace, your salvation, and your presence in our life. And I pray this in the name of our loving Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Allow me to, to say or to start a short um, story before we dive into our study tonight. A young pastor was invited to speak, his first opportunity to address a congregation. He's a little bit nervous, so he went to uh, see an older pastor for advice. And the uh, old pastor said to him, the very first three minutes of any talk, is very crucial. You either capture the attention of your audience or lose your audience. 
So the young pastor listened intently and nodded. And the uh, older pastor continued. You could start your preaching with a story like this. Well, I spent many years in the arms of a woman who is not my wife. Oops. Nagulat yung young pastor. Laglag ang panga niya sa kagulatan. At uh, abang siya perplex sa sinabi nung nung pastor, nung nakakanat ang pastor, sabi, the old pastor continues, that was my mother. That's my mom. Oh, that's a good idea. Sabi naman nung young pastor, I will do the same. So the next Sunday, na mag address na siya sa congregation and ready to address the big crowd at the local church. Pakit. Umakit na siya sa platform and then pumunta siya sa podium holding the two sides of the podium. He looked at the congregation. He looked at the people from from left to right and hanggang sa nakatutok na siya sa middle. And then uh, start saying like this. Well, I spent many years in the arms of a woman who is not my wife. Nagulat yung congregants at napatutok sa kanya ang lahat ng mata. Sa kagulatan ng pastor, na yung pastor, sa reaction ng mga tao, nakalimutan niya yung kanyang susunod na sasabihin. Yan ang sabi niya, oh, my life sometimes I forgot. I forgot the name of the, the name of the woman. So, sa ating uh, tatalakayin ngayong araw na to, aking isinulat ang mat- napakaganda at napakahalagang sasabihin sa inyo upang hindi ko makalimutan tulad nung yang pastor na yon. Okay. Now, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and grab them. We're going to look at James chapter 1 verses 17 through 18. Sabi dito ay uh, in every good, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all He created. Pagpalain ang salita ng Diyos. Now, our text today is telling us to shift our focus from troubles, suffering, fears, uncertainties of 2020 to things that God sets for us in 2021. There is something in me that needs to plan around the year to come. Those are my personal plans, family plans, like how I want to approach the heart of our children and grandchildren, how I want to build up and encourage my marriage, about my relationship with the Lord, how I cultivate my affections for the Lord, where I want to grow in regard to the perceived weaknesses. I can make financial plans based on what I know. But there's a whole lot coming for me, for us in 2021 that I don't know. I can look at my children and grandchildren, friends and relatives or neighbors. And I can begin to plan about how I want to cultivate their souls with the Word of God. how I want to cultivate the relationships with Jesus Christ. But their receptivity 
and what comes into their experience in life is going to dictate whether or not those plans of mine are fruitful. What happens as we look at the future? Is there all of this unknown that is there to sabotage our best laid plans? So what I want to do is to try to root us not in what can change, but in what never changes. What I want to do is to make the appeal that building our lives on the immutability of God, that is, God does not change. Building our lives on the four facts that God, that our God is good, is faithful, is the truth. And we are regarded by Him valuable. Having this focus in the best, is the best way to enter into 2021. That there would be confidence and trust in God of the Bible. And lean into for the good of our own souls. To that, I'm going to have to say some things you are going to love hearing. And to say some things that I think you won't love hearing, but it doesn't make it true. Fair enough? Kasi minsan may, uh, may mga pagkakataon o may nangyari sa buhay natin na hindi maganda. May mga pagkakataon naman na maganda. At yun ay aking tatalakayin sa inyo ngayong araw na ito. Is it fair enough? In 1969, Apollo 11 landed on the moon and in July 20 of the same year, Neil Armstrong became the first human to step on the moon. In 1950s, television is phenomenal because uh, the colored TV was was introduced. Karon tayo ng colored TV, hindi na yung black and white. Sa 19, if I am not mistaken, it was in 1952 that was introduced. Our cars before was primed by an S-type metal that inserted into a fan belt of the car and turning it in a circular motion and the car starts. Tatandaan ba natin yun, yung biniberit ng metal na ganito sa unahan ng sasakyan then mag starts now today just a press on the bottom the car starts what a change worldwide the number of tens that have aged doubled since 1989 and aged since 1994 is still one of the leading killers and today heart disease cancer Suicide are the leading causes of death in the U.S. The pandemic is still affecting many lives. So, it's not going better. That's the point I'm trying to make. Now, first verse of our text says, Every good gift and every perfect is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. If we're going to talk about perfect gifts from God, we need to do some work because we have been discipled specifically to think about goodness or think about perfection through certain lenses. We have been discipled by the day in which we live to believe that what is perfect for us, what is good for us, is the immediate lifting of pain, difficulty, and sorrow, or the immediate experience of pleasure without cause of consequence. Totoo po yun. Kasi sa ating kinagisnan, sa ating, uh, sa ating kinagisnan, um, ay gusto natin ay maalwang buhay at walang paghihirap. Di maga. But if we, we will pay attention to what we are watching, what we are listening to, 
and the atmosphere in which our life is living. What is the perfect, what is a good, what is the right gift is that all pain and difficulty be immediately lifted and our pleasure comes without cause or consequence. Culture nothing will say, that's, that's it. Yan ang perfect gift. But the Word of God disagree with that idea. Napakagandang idea. But it just doesn't work in the actual world we live in. What we, what we believe, though, though, as Christians, is that the very best, the very best thing you and I could ever receive is to be reconciled to God through Christ. In then, abide or dwell in His presence. And if you have not received yet Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the very best gift you could receive in 2021 is to be reconciled to God in Christ. And if you already received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the perfect gift you could receive is to be made all the more aware of abiding in Christ and pleasure in Christ and to be fully known in Christ. Again, sa ating mga believers na, na brothers and sisters, the perfect gift that I want to receive or that we could receive from God is to be fully known in Christ. Ma-identify tayo sa ating Panginoon. Both are the good and perfect gift we should long for in 2021. 20, 20, Why? The devastation in Batangas, its surrounding cities caused by the eruption of Dal Volcano. The storms in the Philippines, particularly in the southern part and central part of Luzon that destroyed lives and property. The wildfires in California and Australia that destroyed hundreds of acres of property. We are living in a changing and an increasingly dangerous world today. One herd of human population is under other form of lockdown. Religious gathering, public meetings, business meetings have all been postponed indefinitely. Our hospitals are flooded with people, sick. Airports are shutting down. Prominent businesses are closed. Educational institutions are closed. Celebrations and festivities are put on hold. In other words, in some way or another, our lives have come to an halt. As problems, chaos and devastations mount, we can become discouraged and lose heart. But we can have hope through our Lord Jesus Christ we are anchored to a firm foundation that will never be shaken and never changes. God, all promises he made, they are yes in Christ. He is not a man that he should die, lie, or a son of man that he should change. His mind, as he said, and will he not do it, or has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? Numbers 23, verse 19. And uh, he said in Mat Malachi 3, 6, For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. That's the truth. Anything that befalls our lives, that moves the needle in that direction, reconciliation to God learning to abide in His presence, all the more is the thing we need most in 2021. So based on the Word of God and the fact that God is going to give perfect gifts to His children, God is going to bless you on one of the days or all 365 days of 2021. He just is. I know based on the promises of God, based on the word of God, that some of you, your anxiety and fear is going to be driven out of you 
and replaced by the peace of Jesus Christ. To some, they are going to have spiritual awakening this year. You are to be made alive in Christ in ways that you cannot fathom right now. Some of you are actually going to become disciples of Christ this year. Some of you are going to be set free from your bondage to sin this year. And some of you are going to receive a promotion. To some of you are going to make more money than you ever had. You will see loved ones come to know Jesus. You are going to see sick people, you know, healed of diseases this year. All of this will happen in 2021 for some of us. Last year, our season are mostly made up of Wednesdays. What I mean is that we live like a Wednesday's child full of suffering and misfortune. We were very restless. We struggled with feelings of fear and insecurities. It is important for us to know that sometimes the best gift, the most perfect gift God could give to us is allowing difficulty, loss, and suffering to invade our human experience. As we age, we experience a season of change in life. Confidence is replaced by doubts. Patience is replaced by boredom. Achievements by failures and or dissolutions. Prosperity brings abundance, opportunity and rewards, but withdraws for seasons when confronted by receding business climbing. Smiles give way to tears in joy, gives way to jubilation, but sometimes give tragedy. Sinners become saints, sometimes saints become sinners. Close friends become hated enemies. Ika nga kaibigan naging mortal na kaaway. The wheel of life continuously turning, our emotions appear and then reappear. Those things are just to confirm that change is constant in our lives. Now, how can we be confident that this good and perfect gift is actually doable? Let's read the last part of uh, verse 17. It said, He never changes or casts a shifting shadows. It is immutability, one of the aspects of God's holiness that sets him apart from us. Sabi nga sa Psalm 33, 11, sabi ng, uh, ni King David, The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations, his word is timeless, and his promises are everlasting. We know that in this life, we will have troubles. It is important to know that sometimes the best gift, the most perfect gift God could give to us is allowing difficulty, loss, and suffering in our life. If we were to go back and look James 1 verse 2, it says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So here is one of the things we have to consider, that all suffering, regardless of where it falls, whether it be just the brokenness of the world, whether it be our rebellion against God, or another's rebellion against God, or even demonic means, where it is seeking to devour us, destroy us. All of this ultimately serve the purpose of God. When we enter the seasons of difficulty, when suffering is no longer an idea, tulad na nangyari sa atin itong 2020 dahil sa pandemia, a day in which we are walking, a month in which we are walking, or a year in which we are walking, all of us, all of us attempted to make sense of the things that happened in our lives. We tried to figure out why it happened and what it all means. 
it is crucial that we pay attention to what stories we are telling ourselves about ourselves, about others, about God, or a particular situation, and whether or not those stories are actually true. The right response is not to rail against heaven, but to wonder what God is up to. For example, if you look at Jeremiah, like uh, in Jeremiah 20, verses 1 to 13, yun ang ating tingnan, basahin nyo mamaya, kung may panahon kayo, was telling himself things about God that were not true, but because his mind believed his version of reality instead of God's, he lost his hope. But in verse the 21 to 23 of Lamentations 3, however, Jeremiah begins to have a change of mind and heart. He says, I will recall to mind, therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for these compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Kasi noon si Jeremiah ay pinarusahan ng high priest noon. Sa Jeremiah 21.13, pinarusahan siya at kinulong. Pero hindi siya sumukaw. And if you have read the first chapter of Job, there is this fascinating study on God's sovereign rule over the works of the enemy. Satan has to ask permission to mess with Job, and when God gives permission, he puts parameters around it. Our text today is telling us to shift our focus from troubles, sufferings, uncertainties of 2020 to, th to things that God sets for us in 2021. From our text, there are four things that we have to consider of what we have to focus on 2021. Una na, the goodness of God. Sa verse 17 ng ating text, sabi doon, every good gift and perfect gift is from God. Now, look to all the kindness of God has shown us rather than at the temptation confronting us. Pangalawa, second is focus on the faithfulness of God's character. Sabi sa verse 17, He is the father of lights who does not change like shifting shadows. In other words, God never changes and always shines. Why does a portion of the earth become dark even though the sun always shines? Because of God. Because earth keeps turning, God is constantly shining forth His goodness, truth, and grace. The only thing that we have to do is to turn to Him, not away from Him. And third, focus on God's Word. He gave us birth by the Word of Truth, sa verse 18 ng ating text. What scriptures accomplish for our salvation, though it can accomplish for our sanctification as well. At ang pang-apat is focus on God's plan. You are the first fruits of His creatures. In the Old Testament, the Israelites gave God the first fruits, the first fruits of their crops, flocks, and herds. They demonstrated how they valued the Lord by giving Him the first and best of what they own. How much more as God's first fruit, you and I are of highest value to Him. We are sons and daughters of the living God. Don't succumb to the temptation and don't lower your dignity. Let me ask you this. Have you ever just for a brief moment lost your mind? You lost your mind at your spouse or you snap at one of your kids and said something crazy. Not mean, but like insane. And you were driving your car and you took something personally that was not personal. And you found things coming out of your mouth that you did not know was inside of you. 
you just had these moments where you acted in such a way that you were like, oh my God, I can't believe that's, that is in me. Yes, ako meron. I, I, I have all this moment. Na minsan, bigla ka nalang magsasalita ng nakakasakit sa damdamin ng tao. At nalalaman mo, huli na na, ganun pala ako. Because of the sin nature sa ating puso, sa atin. Pero ang iba, maaring iba sa atin ay hindi masabi o maako na sila ay nakagawa ng ganito because they don't want to see them or to see their, humility, their humanity ng iba. Hindi gusto makita ng ibang tao ang kanyang humanity. But here's what's beautiful. Okay? God in His immutability has seen all your humanity and has not distanced himself. He has drawn near, in fact, he has drawn near, and that is where we get our confidence to keep, to keep getting back up, to keep leaning into the gospel, to keep following him with all our hearts, because he is not going to change his mind concerning us, despite us. Our world, our world changes rapidly. Trusted government fail and great emotions falter. In fact, the nature of humanity and all of its institutions, scientific, political, religious, educational, etc., is unstable. As a result, many people struggle with feelings of fear and insecurity, but there is one constant and there is one that we can rely on, God, because God never changes. Maraming salamat po, Panginoon, sa iyong salita. Pagpalahin kayo ng buong may kabago.